How's it going YouTube? Markins here. We are going to be talking about leveling in Necromancer. And this this you know small short video is going to be basically giving you some pointers about like how to level your necromancer and it's trying it's gonna try and you know give you tips that are going to be carrying you through, especially the early game. Up until like mid game, maybe a little bit like transitioning into the late game as well. Uh, that's definitely possible. So we are going to be jumping into ray skeletons and they are going to be maxed out from the beginning. One thing that I can tell is that like the, you know the usual rule of like having one main ability in this case is going to be the skeletons that are carrying us. Uh, that should be maxed out. It definitely applies to necromancer as well. So that said though, one another thing that I can tell is that you know maxing out the main over here and then jumping into undead legion might not be the best thing. Uh, I, I would probably advise you, you know, to go like head to head, kind of like at the same time, leveling them up at the same time. So we'd like put, put five points into raise and then rush for the undead legion. And when it's five, also just like you know, spread evenly all the time. Simply because like undead legion is the one that is actually giving you the capability of summoning more skeletons. So therefore, you don't necessarily need to be running around with like only three skeletons for some time to come. You would like to have a little bit like larger army. But after after all that, you definitely want to be maxing out this entire line. Uh, from there, you have like two options, sort of. You should definitely put a couple of points into the Blight Fiend uh, and its modifiers. For sure, That this, this thing is basically going to be your tank. And it's pretty good at that too. It's actually surprisingly good up until like Ultimate or something. And even in the Ultimate difficulty, it's pretty good. Unless, you know, the resistances are not so great. Um... So from there, I was saying, like, if you would like to, you could definitely max max it out even. But what I do is that, like, I leave them around, like, three to four points in every single one of these. I go with the mastery up until, um, up until the very end, and I max out the master, master of Death first. And then I turn back and max out the entire Blight Fiend line as well. Uh, from this point, so basically at that point, you have uh, the entire Skeleton Tree, the entire Blight Fiend Tree, and then you have an exclusive that is maxed out. At this point, you could definitely go ahead and select your secondary mastery. Like at this point, you're pretty much like set for the tips that I'm gonna give when it comes to like it, at the very least the skills. Um, or you could also like you know take a couple points into the call of the grave for sure. It's a good path for your pets for sure. Uh, the same thing can be said for, for like an aura that you can run uh, if you would like to. For instance, I have an necromancer here that I was leveling for you know some sort of like a chill down video earlier on a couple of weeks back. Um, Apparently, I did take one point into it, and that is completely fine. Just to have like an aura at the back, maybe maybe link like a devotion or something into it later on, definitely possible. So feel free to like you know put one point there, one point here. You could definitely mess around it at that point. So one thing that I'll mention about necromancy is that like, and this is pretty unique when you, when you you know compare this to like other other masteries, necromancy actually can transition from race skeletons into something like Ravenous Earth. And trust me, Ravenous Earth is a ridiculous leveler as well. So what you could do is like you could get to level 24 or something by basically maxing out the race skeletons. If you don't necessarily enjoy the summoner style at that point, just take everything out as you know you can you can come over here in the corner top right in Devil's Crossing there's the spirit guide. And you can basically respec out of this entire line and go into Revenant's Earth. I would probably suggest you to be about like level 24 or something so that like you have enough points to do it. Uh, that is definitely my suggestion. Around level 24, if you don't want to be playing as someone anymore, just go for the Revenant's Earth. Uh, max this out, max that one out. And in my opinion, you should be focusing somewhat heavy vitality damage. Uh, the third one is not so bad either, especially while leveling. But it is definitely falling short when you, when you compare it to like DK and when you compare it to the main Ravenous Earth as well. I'm not going to be continuing the tips about like the Ravenous Earth leveling because I don't necessarily do it myself. But I do know that it's incredibly good. So you're going to need to figure, figure the rest of it yourself but it shouldn't be too hard. Simply because you're already being supported by your mi minus vitality over here. And I'm guessing you're going to need to go for the Harbinger of Souls. Now back to back to the skeleton or like the summoning style of leveling which I do. Uh, I'm going to tell you a couple of devotions as well. So how I go with that is that I, I go with the fiend, even though it is a little bit nerfed uh, with the interaction with the skeletons, I rush for the fiend. So this is the first thing that I go for. 
Uh, as usual, you can activate the fiend by putting one point into the red. And after completing the fiend, the fiend is giving you back, you know, two red affinity already, affinity bonus. So you don't necessarily need this anymore. You could play greedy and then respec out of it. That's always something that I do. From there, I, I used to, you know, you, you could, well, at this point you have like two options actually. You could go for the Seder's Guide, which is giving you quite a lot of like, you know, physical resistance for the very early on of the game. And then good movement speed as well. Those are very good. I really like the Seder's Guide at the very beginning of the game, definitely. Uh, the other option is that basically going for the Shepherd's Goal. Uh, if you go for the Shepherd's Goal, you're going to need to have some sort of like an active to activate it. Remember that. Uh, you don't necessarily have this on this build. Let's see if like if Call of the Grave is cap capable of like activating it. Doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like it. So you can need to like figure out some sort of like a. So you can you can definitely do it with like a mobility item. That is one thing that I could definitely mention right from here is that like after completing Warden's laboratory, after co killing Warden and completing the Act One. Uh, remember that even though you want to continue towards like Act 2, you could just jump into Forgotten Gods to the Conclave. Uh, you could do just the first quest, which is right inside the town, and then he's going to tell you to select one of the, you know, cults in there. Uh, select the one that you would like to have the mobility item of. So, whichever one you select, you'll be able to get the, get the first tick, which in this case it is the Bismil with us. So I'm friendly, and thanks to that, I was able to buy myself the vanish uh, and th and that is that is my first mobility and you could do this with like any character out there the only thing that you need to do is kill warden jump into the conclave of the three and that is very good in that case you know that also fixes this link right over here you could definitely link that one over there as well that would be a good thing so Seder's guide shepherd's goal we have raven uh roven crown which is going to be unlocking right after these two if i'm not mistaken um as you as you know like at the very beginning you will need to like put this one over there to unlock this later on as usual you could remove it same goes for uh same goes for the raven on this this one is unlocking it already that one's already unlocking the raven the last thing that i'm going to mention is that like behemoth is extremely good uh even for the early game very good right now it's at a very good state and you're gonna need to link this to one of the auras that you have so this build right here you know this starter type of style and this starter type of like devotions are going to be fitting into any sort of combination that you're going to do with your necromancy even if you're planning some sort of like a melee guy at the end if you would like to level up with necromancy you could definitely follow this remember one thing um if you end up leveling like this just like in any other build, if you are fire, you're going to need to support the fire. In this case, you're going to need to support your pets. So when you mouse over something like this, when it says the golden writing over there, skeleton scale with the pet bonuses. That strictly means that like if you're taking all damage for yourself, skeletons are not going to be improving. So every single item, every single component or augment that you're going to be supporting, maybe even the devotions, they can need to strictly say that like pets are gaining this. Um, I think that's going to be it from me. Thanks for watching, YouTube. See you next time.